freedom in Swahili. I just want to welcome all of you today and thank all of you for coming out to the March for Reparations to African People. Oh, give yourselves all a round of applause. Yep. I'm a descendant of settlers and I believe in reparations in order to heal our nation. And we need to address racially based climate change in order to save our planet, in order to save this race. And we need to give reparations before we're gonna be able to heal anything, including our planet. Hey, yo, she's crying hard as fuck. Huh? You're probably wondering what you're watching. I'm your host, Andrew Callahan, and that footage was from the Uhuru Reparations March on the streets of Oakland, California. At the time of this rally, I was a few hours south in Hollywood at an anti-vax march. Here we are, Channel 5 Live Worldwide, Hollywood and Vine, Freedom March. But the night before, <laughs> we caught wind of a very important day, the National Day for African Reparations, hosted by an organization called Uhuru Solidarity, whose slogan is white solidarity with black power. This ain't no way this is real, right? No shot this is real. As white people, we have always upheld the lie that America is the home of freedom and democracy. But the reality is very different. Because every opportunity and amenity I have uh, has been at the expense of my black and brown brothers and sisters around the world. You owe money. If you don't give it, we're going to come take it. come to take it. Uh -huh, and I've oh. seen Prince take it, all right? So while I was busy in so they're just filming themselves committing robbery? Is that, is that what they're doing? <laughs> you know what this is called right here? Bro, this is exactly what Tom McDonald is talking about in his white boy video. <laughs> this is virtual signaling at its highest degree. We are watching true masters of the art form. Take notes, ladies and gentlemen. All right, cash at me $10 right now for reparations. <laughs> So while I was busy in Hollywood at the anti-vax rally, we sent our African studies correspondent, Saddam, to the Bay Area to figure out what the hell- Not a black dude in a ski mask. To figure out what the hell's going on. My mama always told me about that wall. And I said, okay, ma, I'm gonna my feet. We are here at Snow Park. It's uh, one of the whitest parks I've ever seen. We're going to see the uh, Uhuru Solidarity Movement. It's a bunch of white people that believe in uh, African reparations. It's just a group of people experiencing white guilt. White boy, white no. They want to give us money, so let's get some money. <laughs> the United States of America was... <laughs> the pitching up of Kanye's track. The United States of America was built on stolen land and stolen labor. It's really about we as white people confronting our privilege in this system. And not just confronting it ideologically, but confronting it actually by giving back. I feel like they don't know the difference pretty between African and African American. Like Mexican Americans are people that are born in Mexico and migrated to the United States. It's like a, you're a black American basically. Can I have $5? Can I have $5? Can I have $5? Do you, are you serious? Yes. You got chained? Actually, I don't. Sorry. I don't. Sorry. It's okay. Next time. <laughs> yeah. Next Next time. What's going on? How would you like to see like reparations being used like in the black community? I think that's up to the black people and how they want to do it. Can I get $5? Of course. I only have a 20. Uh, Does that work? That works, yeah. $20 is cool. Thank you. I love you. I love you back. <laughs> we're with the Freedom Socialist Party, so we're a socialist, feminist, anti-racist. That motherfucker just got $20 because this chick has white guilt. We do think that redistributing the wealth mm -hmm. um, is going to need to happen for any liberation to really happen. Hell yeah. Can I have $5? <laughs> That's not the, the, the massive reparation. Uh, finally, someone says it out loud. That's not the massive rep. That's not the point of what we're doing. <laughs> finally, somebody said it. It's not so much, I don't think, for any working class or per person to provide that personally, but to be in a movement that's demanding that that happen at a systemic level. And again, tax the rich to get schools, tax the rich to make housing, tax the rich to pay for reparations. this fucking video there's nothing good that comes out of white guilt yeah she's coming at it from a systemic way that was a really that was a really good answer for this very trolly video can i have five bucks all i have is a 20 does that work sure <laughs> so right now uh hella people gave speeches and now we're marching to the furniture store the uhuru furniture store 
So far, I got 20 bucks. <laughs> I would have got 25, but the dude didn't have change. Some of these niggas are just broke. <laughs> Africa is the future. It is the youngest continent on the planet. <laughs> I know. They were on it. They were on one knee, bro. I cannot believe they were on one knee. Africa is the future. <laughs> Like, what is this doing? What is this one moment of being on your knee and putting a fist up in the air actually doing? Africa is the future. It is the youngest continent on the planet. There is so much potential there. Living there, it's so dynamic. There's so much opportunity. It is literally the future. It will drive innovation from the youth. And is it the youngest continent? What are three of your favorite things about Africa? Oh, wow, okay. I was in West Africa and they joke a lot with each other. And so like if I'm Tore and you're Koulibaly, yeah. um, I'd be like, oh, you eat beans. And you'd be like, oh, well, you're my slave. So <laughs> yeah. Cool. Probably not a great joke to repeat as a white lady in the United States. Just saying. Can I get $5? I don't have any cash, but I can Venmo you. I only got Cash App. Shout out Cash App. Cash App is the best service ever. Channel 5 Cash App gang. Shout, Shout out, out to Cash, Cash App. App. The best way to send reparations. Uh, <laughs> if you're... Hey, shout out to Cash App, the best way to send reparations. Shout, Shout out, out to Cash, Cash App. App, the best way to send reparations. <laughs> uh, if you're reincarnated, would you be white again? I want to say no. I would love to be like a part of the black community, like for real. But I also know that that's kind of like signing myself up for issues in life. So going into the rally, I didn't know what to expect. I realized that. Bro, the back of his tie is stupid long. <laughs> Most of these people weren't even from Oakland. Uh, a lot of these people was from like Virginia, well, Boston, Santa Cruz, San Diego. Pretty, if the edge is laid, she needs to get paid. And the thing about Oakland is, it's a well, majority black city, right? <laughs> was it Chocolate City, as, it, as some people would say? Is that what they said? That, I think that's what they used to call cities, like Chocolate City or some shit like that. It was a majority black population. But Uhuru's platform for reparations does not address anything in the Bay Area. All the money collected at that march was supposedly going to the construction of a basketball court in St. Louis, Missouri. Ain't no fucking way they got reparations money and decided to build a stereotypical sport complex in another city. A basketball court? They took the reparations money and they decided to start a small music recording label that only hires local rappers. Huh? This is some shit that you would see on Chappelle's show, swear to God. All the money collected at that march was supposedly going to the construction of a basketball court in St. Louis, Missouri. Niggas love basketball. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm playing though. But that's not really gonna uplift the community as much as like some type of educational institution, uh, uh, something that- They basically said, hey, go dribble a basketball. That's your only way out the hood and we know it. New books, new lockers in the school, nah. Basketball is the way out. The basketball court seems kind of redundant to me, especially if you're in Oakland. So Oakland has become one of the hottest rental markets in the Bay Area. Now people who've lived in the city for decades are getting pushed out. Well, the reality of gentrification is hitting Oakland's LGBTQ community tonight. The building that serves as headquarters for Oakland Pride has been sold to a real estate firm. Me and my daughter got regentified. Oakland's black community has decreased by 25% in the past 10 years and 91% of low income homes Homes of color are currently in areas that are actively gentrifying or about to gentrify. This Damn. is a result of big tech's takeover of the Bay Area, which has caused home prices to rise while wages for the working class have remained the same. I mean, we should look and see how many basketball courts are in St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. They just threw another one up. <laughs> It just seems extremely racist to me. I don't know. <laughs> a group of uh, all white people go to historically one of the blackest cities in California, the home of the Black Panthers, and um, they want to collect money from other white people, but like not marching through white neighborhoods and um, build a basketball court so we can ball up. <laughs> in St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah, like on the other side of the country. <laughs> Somewhere where the people who donated the money will never be able to see shit that might come out of there. You know what I mean? Who knows? And the next Kobe Bryant <laughs> come out St. Louis, Missouri from the Uhuru Solidarity Basketball Court. <laughs> Nobody in Oakland will be able to be like, I seen that kid, I grew up with him. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs>
we decided to see what's up with people from the town, actually from the community. That's true, Magnus. I do agree. I mean, any any park really. It's not even just a basketball court. It's basketball courts, parks, like anything where there's community built around being outside. There's gonna be less violence. There's gonna be less. You know, it's just, it's just statistically shit is gonna go down. That's negative. But they're taking money from people in Oakland and going building a basketball court for people in Missouri that have mad basketball courts when people in Oakland are getting pushed out of their homes due to gentrification. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck kind of ass backwards shit is this? Well, all I heard was white solidarity. I said, oh, I better get the hell out of here. <laughs> all I heard was white solidarity. I better get the hell out of here. <laughs> uh, uh, wait, with what? Huh? <laughs> You're right. I didn't, I didn't know what that meant. So. Yeah. Well, what are your opinions on reparations? I agree with it. I mean, as a people, we've been through a lot. Yeah. I mean, you can, we, all, all we can do is state our case. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like with anything with laws and, you know, rights, you know. You think uh, white people are evil? No, I ain't saying no. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying some of them are, but some of them are not. You think they owe us money, though? I don't think they should. Somebody should, uh, you know, give a little something back. As a start, I think that every black person in America deserves the right to know where we come from, our ancestry, and it could be done with a DNA from our government. It would, get, again, give us knowledge. This is literally what the song Black by Dave is talking about. He has a line about this where we don't get to we don't get to see our family's lineage because they try to erase that in order to erase the cutoff from like slavery into the United States. It's literally what this guy's talking about. It's crazy how much less of a joke it seems once we actually start talking to black people. You know, like people that actually have an idea of like what should happen. When we're when we're talking to the white people, that shit is just comedy. I really don't understand and I'm in the middle. I, I think it's more like for the government side. Like I get the whole reparations thing, but I don't think my white neighbor should have to pay $20,000 to somebody just because she's white or he's white. It's definitely a governmental level. Yeah, the video got real deep real quick. Exactly. It just shows like the it shows the difference between people who actually have an idea of what should happen because they've been affected or their generations prior have been affected versus people that are just feel guilty about what their generations prior have done. Talking to the white people really wasn't getting us anywhere. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, reparations? I think ideally it is owed, but in reality, I don't believe that it will happen. How do you put an amount on and where do you, where does it start? And where's Exactly, it's such an abstract concept of like reparations, like where to, who gets what? Where does the money come from? Like how, how would you even start that? It ain't that abstract, hashtag cash app, hashtag ad. What if I just start asking white people for money? No. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> I think that's a federal a government thing. We just can start asking, you know, people for money. It's, he doesn't owe me anything. I got $20 so far. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yes. So who controls where all the money goes when y'all collect reparations? The furniture store. Um, I, don't know, I think it's a great way that to raise money for the movement. So what does the furniture store do with the money? I don't know exactly how they use the money, but I think they use it for like the same kind of thing that we're marching for today to, to build resources um, and to invest in the black community in the US, yeah. Does it go to the, uh, the basketball court? I'm not sure, yeah. She don't know where this the money my goes. This time volunteering. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Bro, we stumbled on a gem of a fucking channel.